Hello, my name is Dustin Ranglick. I am the field station leader and predator project leader of the USDA APHIS Wildlife Services National Wildlife Research Center's Utah Field Station. I know it's quite a mouthful, but really we're focused around resolving human wildlife conflicts with predators. And so a lot of that is working on developing different conflict prevention tools for stopping predation. Um, and so one of those that I'm here to talk to you about today is if we can use drones uh, as an effective conflict prevention tool for, for hazing wolves away from livestock. Uh, I will note that you're welcome to uh, tweet about this uh, presentation, but I would ask that you please don't share any of the videos um, from it. So let's jump in. First, I just want to acknowledge a lot of the wonderful people and organizations that have helped make this happen. Uh, with Wildlife Services uh, in Oregon, Paul Wolf, Clint Royals, Colby McAdams, and Jeff Flores, as, and then also from Wildlife Services, Luke Miller. Um, they're the ones who are actually doing this work, and I just get to, to come and talk about it, and, and uh, I'm not going to take credit for it. Uh, it's really them. Um, and then also the, the County Wolf Commissions of Jackson County, Oregon, and Klamath County, Oregon, uh, where we're based. They uh, provided a lot of financial resources that make this happen, um, as well as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So let's just jump right into the drone research um, that, that we've been doing. And I'm just going to hit you with it right up front. Drones can be an effective hazing tool. We were able to demonstrate this uh, in 2022, and we've been continuing this work through 2023. I have a graduate student who will be starting uh, in January to continue to evaluate this over the next few years. The questions that still remain are, what are the limitations of this tool? Um, and that's where we could use some help. We're looking for people who are interested in using this technology as a hazing tool for wolves. Um, and we would love to have you help us collect some data so we can see when and where this tool is effective and just as importantly, when and where it's not. So we've been doing this work in Southwest Oregon in the Klamath Basin. Um, and particularly a lot of this work is focused around the rogue pack. Um, this particular pack is, has a history of creating problems. And, and one reason why this is such an important tool for this area is because wolves are still listed under the Endangered Species Act in this, in this area. So um, from July 12th to August 1st of 2022, we had 11 confirmed depredations. So that's basically every other night uh, that these wolves were killing livestock. Wildlife Services was called in to respond to basically, you know, try to put a stop to the bleeding. Uh, and they initiated night watch, which is essentially where we have uh, a field crew on the ground every night um, using ground-based and then the additional of uh, drone thermal cameras to be able to detect wolves and then go and implement additional non-lethal hazing tools from the ground. Um, and I just want to mention that all of this was done with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service permit so that we were able to, to conduct this work. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but I want to just let you know this was done over the course of 85 days with an estimated cost of about of more than $130,000. So this was not cheap. Over that time, we had about 51 interactions with wolves. And if you're interested in the details of how many flights, takeoffs, landings, et cetera, that information is here for you. But let's just really get into it. So first off, here is our, our first encounter with, uh, with a wolf. So you can see the wolf is right here in the center of the screen. Um, and what we're really hoping for, if this is going to be an effective hazing tool, we want a strong negative response. At this point, we're flying just the drone. So the only noise it is hearing is from the rotors. There's no speaker. There's no lights. There's nothing else. The wolf at this point has definitely noticed our drone. So I just want you to kind of pay attention to its behavior here and see if we're getting that sort of strong negative response that we're hoping for. Oh, what's that? Right, very interested in this drone, but he's interested in it as a toy, right? He wants to play. This is not something that is scary to him at all. He's wanting to know if he can eat it, right? Um, uh, what is this new toy that you've brought me? So definitely not that strong negative response that we were hoping for, but we are seeing, um, so, so, so we're immediately starting to think about what else we can do. And maybe we need to add in uh, particularly what we thought was a speaker. We can add in a speaker where we can play either gunshots or music or sirens or even the human voice where the pilot can actually talk uh, live through the, through the drone. They use this in search and rescue operations. Um, that might be beneficial. So we went back 
and we added a speaker. And let's take a look here. So again, we have a wolf here um, walking out, heading towards some cattle that are over uh, off left of the screen here. And what you're going to notice is we're going to fly in. You're going to see that this wolf is definitely paying, like notices the drone, wants to have that same sort of reaction that the first wolf did. Um, you can see it start to be really interested, think maybe this is a toy. But then we're going to yell at it through the speaker, hey, wolf, get out of here, um, or some other language uh, similar. And then this wolf is going to, you're going to see an immediate response from this wolf and it's going to take off. So he's seeing it. What's going on? Is that something I can play with? Um, yelled out with the speaker and he's gone. He's immediately recognized, oh, this is a human something. I know those humans. They come in and they haze me. They bother me. They're pushing me out. They're not letting me do what I want to do. I got to get out of here, right? They already have that negative fear response because of all the other on the ground hazing techniques that have been taking place in this area. So once it had that human voice, it knew that it needed to get out of Dodge. Um, and so we were able to show like, yeah, this, this works, right? Able to push this wolf out of the open, out away from the cows, back across this fence line and into the trees, into the forest where it belongs. But how is this gonna work when the wolves are actually in and among the cows, right? So that's our, kind of our next question. Can we stop an interaction? And here we have multiple wolves um, in with the cows. And often when you're doing these flights, you're paying attention to the cows because the cows are gonna really show you if something's wrong. You can see that all of a sudden they're running, they're moving. And we have multiple wolves in here. There's one wolf uh, right here. Sorry, it's kind of moving around, so it's hard. We got a wolf here, we got a wolf here. Um, but we're going to come in with the drone, again, use the speaker. And I, I kind of wish that we had audio so you knew exactly when the speaker is used. But we've used the speaker, and these wolves are already starting to be like, oh, we're caught. We're busted. Time to call off this hunt. Let's get out of here. Um, and time to go. The humans are coming. They're going to be responding on the ground. It's time for us to leave. Um, at one point in this video, as this wolf is leaving, you're going to see it kind of turn and look back thinking, oh, maybe I should go back there. You know, um, those those cows do look pretty tasty. I'm gonna use that speaker again, yell at it again, and you're gonna see the wolf pick up the pace and go. Yep, right there. So he's he's recognized, okay, I'm I'm busted, I'm caught. And now this drone is, is acting as a really effective phasing tool. All right, finally, stopping an attack. This is really kind of the, the piece de resistance um, of this. Here in the middle of the screen, there are three wolves, one, two, and three, um, actively attacking this steer. We have two of them that are still right onto the hindquarters of this steer. We're going to come in with the drone, yell at them with the speakers, um, and then I just want you to watch what these wolves do. Boom. Gone. Out of there, right? They know they're busted. They know they're caught. Um, and because of that consistent ground presence and the, the hazing associated with that, they know that they need to get out of here, right? So this is an effective tool. Uh, we let the producer know. He went back in the first thing the next morning, checked on the cows, did find that steer, minor injuries, did a little bit of doctoring, just fine. So with our drones, and we added in those drones over that next 85 nights, we only had two more depredations. So that is nearly 23 times lower than what we saw before wildlife services came out with the drone where we were about every other night. So instead of, you know, 11 depredations in three weeks, we went to two over three months, um, right? So this is a major dramatic impact. This can work, but let's talk limitations because um, there definitely are some. First of them, battery life and what that does to flight time. Um, with these, the drones we were using in 2022, we had about a 22 minute flight time. Um, we've upgraded to some newer technology, a little bit better and we're getting uh, closer to 30 minutes. Um, we are able to hot swap batteries and get right back up again, but you are still limited. So here in the middle of the screen, you can see that there's one cow by itself, somehow separated from the rest of the herd, and it is being actively attacked. But our battery is about to die, and this drone is gonna have to return to base. We have called it into our ground crew. You can see that actually here's the ground crew coming to respond right now, somebody on foot. Um, already coming out, but we got to go. Time to leave. So this drone's now headed back to base. He's not, the drone itself is not able to be used in the hazing because of this limitation in battery life. 
it's got to go back, land, get the battery swapped out, and can come back out again. Um, I believe in this case, we were able to stop that um, with the ground crew. You can see they were already on their way. But if I remember right, um, this animal did have to be put down. Another limitation is just trees. Um, you can see when we're flying out here in this open cover, it works out really great. You can see really well. There's a wolf right here that's about to go into the trees. Cows show up really well out in the open. We still have cows in the trees. This wolf just went in there. This, the, this tree cover is gonna limit our ability to detect the wolf and also to fly this drone safely, right? Um, you can only fly, you, you gotta be really careful around these trees. Um, and so as we get up here, you're gonna see, we still will be able to see the wolf. You can still see the cows in the trees, but it's much more difficult. Um, and so as we're thinking about using this as a tool, it works really great in this open country and in flat country. But how is it going to work when we get into this more timbered stuff? So our wolf is um, right there here in the middle of the screen. You're going to see it come walk through this little bit of a clearing here. Um, so you can see we can still see this wolf. We can still follow it, but it becomes much more difficult. You lose it in moments. Um, and if you are trying to still make a first initial detection, this is going to be much more difficult than if you've already spotted it and now you're trying to shepherd it out in a way, right? So more difficult to detect and more difficult to fly. So some of the work that we're doing uh, moving forward. What is the relative cost and effectiveness of this tool, right? That's a major question that we have. How does this work compared to other, other devices, uh, other non-lethal techniques that we have? We spend a lot of money. These drones are $10,000 plus um, in order to have that all the capabilities that you need with the thermal, with the speaker, with the spotlight potentially. Um, so we need to know how well does this actually work compared to other things? How do the wolves and other wildlife respond to the drone? And particularly, where do they go after the hazing? You know, is this just like a leaf blower effect where you're blowing the problem into the neighbor's yard? Um, or are they actually leaving, going back up onto the forest and, and consuming native prey instead? And then what is the habituation rate? We know that with our non-lethal tools, eventually wolves habituate to them. You know, flattery, you got 60 to 90 days before they habituate. And once they do, it doesn't work at all anymore, right? I would expect that it'll be much longer with a drone because this is an adaptive movement. It's coming in, it's changing. Um, it's going to be following that wolf, pursuing that wolf, um, much more like a natural predator or something would, um, but it's still possible they will habituate to this. And so that's why I think it's so important that we still have that ground crew that's responding as well. And then will this work in other areas? You know, I've mentioned tree cover, I've mentioned terrain, um, more, more rough topography. All those are gonna impact your ability to detect and your ability to pursue and haze. So if you're working in some other area, you wanna test this, you wanna try this, I would please love to collaborate with you so that we can collect data and see when and where this works and when and where it doesn't, because it's not a silver bullet. It, it can be very effective, but I don't think that it's going to work everywhere all the time. So with that, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please let me know.